Palaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. King Charles seems to be playing hardball when it comes to Prince Harry, and it all ties back to Harry's legal case for automatic security in the UK. According to biographer Robert Hardman, Charles won't entertain talks with Harry unless he drops his court case against the British government. The fear? A repeat of the Burrell incident, when Diana's former butler avoided charges after claiming the Queen had known he was taking care of her personal items. The palace's priority now is avoiding any potential, he said, he said, in court. Meanwhile, Charles and Prince William's estates are under scrutiny after a report revealed they're raking in millions from public services and charities through the duchies of Lancaster and Cornwall. The estates are expected to earn millions from leasing land to the UK public services and charities. Together, the estate controls over 5,400 leases and, with exemptions from business taxes, are projected to bring in at least £50 million. This includes revenue from the NHS, schools and the Ministry of Justice, such as an £11.4 million lease to the Guys and St. Thomas NHS Trust, and £37 million from Dartmoor Prison. Notably, some estate properties rented to charities like Marie Curie and Macmillan are now vacant due to rising costs. Despite a focus on environmental concerns, about 13-14% to of residential properties under the duchies have low energy ratings, below the legal rental minimum of E. This has fueled calls for increased transparency and tax compliance, with critics urging that estates pay corporation tax and operate similarly to the Crown Estate, which redirects its profits to the government. The investigation has cast a chilly spotlight on Prince William's inherited estate, revealing that dozens of his rental properties reportedly failed to meet minimum legal energy standards. The probe, conducted with Channel 4's dispatches, found that one in seven rentals in the Duchy of Cornwall are at the lowest energy performance certificate ratings, F or G, which fall below legal requirements. Tenants in these properties reported struggling with mould, damp and inefficient heating systems, pushing many into fuel poverty. One tenant shared that they can only afford to heat two rooms in their home with coal and wood, explaining it gets miserably cold, especially in the winter. Another described drafts so severe that curtains move with the wind. Despite the duchy's £91 million in recent profits, the report found that necessary upgrades like double glazing and insulation were largely neglected, with some tenants fearing eviction or steep rent hikes if they asked for improvements. Prince William, now the Duke of Cornwall, inherited management of the estate from his father, King Charles, a staunch environmental advocate who oversaw it until 2022. In response, the duchy asserts its commitment to improving properties and pursuing net zero status by 2032, but critics argue this royal estate's policies on energy efficiency have left tenants in untenable conditions, exposing them to undue health risks and highlighting broader flaws in the UK rental system. Adding more family tension, King Charles has reportedly cut off Prince Andrew financially to nudge him out of Royal Lodge and into the cosier Frogmore Cottage. The Duke of York, however, claims to have other sources of income from international trade contacts to keep him afloat. Had Queen Elizabeth lived longer, she might have pushed Andrew to leave Royal Lodge. The Queen, who is said to have privately referred to the ongoing scandal as the Andrew Issue maintained a level of leniency towards her son, despite his controversies, including his association with Jeffrey Epstein. However, her death has left Charles to address his brother's affairs, with the king reportedly calling Andrew's bluff by slashing his financial support. Seen driving defiantly near his Windsor residence, the Duke of York is said to be holding firm and insisting he has sufficient funds to cover his estimated £1 million of security costs. A source close to Andrew remarked that he sees no reason to leave, noting he is no longer reliant on the King's financial support. Royal Lodge, a Grade 2 listed mansion in Windsor Great Park, was once the Queen Mother's home and has been Andrew's residence since he signed a 75-year lease in 2003. The Duke resigns there with his ex-wife, Sarah Ferguson, despite long-standing pressures for him to downsize. There's also speculation that Andrew may wish for his daughters, Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie, to inherit the Royal Lodge. However, Terry Fisher, a property expert, highlighted potential hurdles, 
royal leases often restrict inheritance rights for non-working royals, and approval from the Crown estate would be necessary for any succession arrangement. Although Andrew has rights under his lease, the upkeep and security costs of the lodge are significant, potentially straining his finances and making his prolonged residence there challenging. Palace Intrigue will be right back. While Charles is unlikely to wind up as the longest-serving monarch, barring some amazing breakthroughs in human longevity, the Daily Mail reports that today his reign will surpass that of Richard III. Charles has already reigned longer than Edwards V and VIII. You may recall Edward VIII left the throne because he fell in love with an American divorcee. The royal family show has been running for so long that sometimes they have to recycle plots. In a move that signals a shift in how Britain approaches its colonial legacy, royal officials are reportedly considering dropping the term empire from titles within the British honours system. The possible revision, which could see Order of the British Empire rebranded as Order of British Excellence, would give honorees the option of choosing a new title over the traditional one. There is also discussion of an Order of Elizabeth as a tribute to the late Queen. This change, if implemented, would require approval from the government. A senior palace official recently noted that the monarchy would be pretty open to discussion about modernising the honours system, leaving any final decision in the hands of Sir Keir Starmer's administration. The proposal aligns with a broader re-evaluation of the British Empire's impact, especially given calls from Caribbean nations for reparations related to the slave trade. High-profile figures have previously declined honours due to their association with the Empire, including actor Alan Cumming and poet Benjamin Zephaniah, who have spoken out against what they see as the painful legacy of British colonialism. An updated biography of King Charles by Robert Hardman reveals that Queen Elizabeth had been intrigued by a potential name change to the OBE and was open to exploring the idea. Whether or not the proposal advances, it marks a notable moment of introspection within the palace, highlighting the monarchy's continued navigation of tradition versus contemporary values. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or the app of your choice, and leave us a review of some stars if you're enjoying the show. I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is Palace Intrigue. Good times. (laughs) 